Hiya, so this is a 1988 or thereabouts um, Koga Miata Terra Runner that I picked up. So this is the condition that it came in. It came with a few little extras like the Onza bar ends and it has Shimano Dior NT60 components. Plus it came with a Nitto stem and handlebar which is pretty cool as well because I'm quite a fan of Nitto components. So looking around it, it looks in reasonable condition. So the derailers have a little bit of rust on their wearing surfaces and um, the tires are perished and little things like that. Chain obviously needs replacing. The rims actually look like they'll clean up really nicely. They don't look too heavily oxidized or anything. The frame was in all of a pretty good condition. There were a couple of spots of rust and a small dent along the top tube, but really no heavy scratches, not a lot of rust build up. So I saw this on our auction site and I thought it would be about the right size for me. There were a couple of little oddball things about it, so I thought I'd ask a couple of questions before I start bidding on it. I asked a couple of questions like rust, any cracks, is the seat post stuck because the seat was on an angle so sometimes they get seized in place. Um, I took a bit of a gamble bidding on it but it really paid off because one, it's my size, two, the seat post isn't stuck and I've actually checked the stem and that is not stuck either. It looks like the bike was dry stored. There's a bunch of dry grease around the bottom bracket shell, which is a, also a good sign. And from the looks of it, it's pretty much all original, apart from maybe like a skewer, a crookily skewer or something like that. It has like the old Suntour grips on the bar ends, just like little things like that. So as I was getting it out of the car, I thought that the pedal threads were stripped, but the threads are okay. So it looks like it will tidy up pretty nicely. The handlebars do have a bit of fading on them and the stem could really do with a respray, but I won't do that just yet. So before riding a bike for the first time, I always like to go through it just to make sure that the bearings aren't dry and if there's any damage or anything needs to re be replaced, I can replace it then. So I stripped the whole bike down and it came apart really easily actually. Not that anything was loose, but it was just a well put together bike and it was quite obviously dry stored. So nothing was terribly seized in place or anything like that. Um, the hubs actually had uh, fresh grease in them or relatively fresh grease anyway. So they weren't dry at all, it was really nice. Same as the bottom bracket, it looks like it had the same grease as the hubs. So it had an ABUS lock on it, which is a pretty good indication that someone likes the bike or it's used quite often or recently anyway because it wasn't just some old cheap cable lock on it so I, I quite like that sticker there so the bike was in Amsterdam at some point whether it was first sold there or it's been serviced there it's pretty cool but they abbreviated it to a apostrophe D-A-M which is my name it's Adam so I thought that was pretty cool as well as this lifetime guarantee sticker here apart and cleaned. They're actually in pretty good condition. This pulley wheel, this pulley wheel is a bit stuck. Definitely needs cleaning out. This one feels good though. Minimal play in either of them. Quite good condition. So this part here is painted. Uh, I wouldn't polish that up, but I could polish these parts. But that depends on most of the other components, so I try to make it sort of match. Brakes. Another part that's in pretty good condition, so a couple of the bolts need evapor rusting, and the hardware is sort of corroded very, very lightly. Um, the springs are nice, and the actual body just has very light like alloy, aluminium oxidization. Same again for the U-brakes, because these are by the chain, these are actually in pretty good condition. So these don't need cleaning up. Like that's just, there's some grease. <laughs> then there are just a few other little parts that need evapor rusting. So this is alloy, so that'll clean up, but I'll take the bolt out, throw that in the evapor rust. Headset top locking nut. Another little piece to the puzzle. 
the hubs need a little bit of a clean up. There is some alloy ox oxidization, so they won't clean up perfectly with me being careful because there's that sticker there that I'll want to keep. The rims should clean up really nicely, actually. Now to get the Uniglide off. So Uniglide differs from more modern and regular Hyperglide cassettes in that the smallest cog actually threads onto the prehub body. So this is easiest to do with two chain whips, but most people don't have two chain whips. So you can either, with the wheel on the bike, use the existing chain to hold the, the freehub body in place and then use a chain whip. Or I had the wheel out of the bike and I just put everything in a vise with an old chain and then popped it off that way. So as you can see, all the splines are even compared to this cassette, which is a newer one. And they normally have a stepped wider one and then a thinner one. So this won't just go straight on. So with everything all apart, I could pull all the components fully apart and then soak those in degreaser before rinsing and evaporating all the other things just to make them all well, nice and clean again. So this is more or less my way to clean parts. I just have a, a solution of degreaser that cleans off all the all the gunk and stuff and then I do it by hand. Um, the degreaser softens everything up so it really just you're just wiping everything off after that. So it's it doesn't take a lot of time. So I don't see the need for any expensive even just a parts washing bin, I don't really see the need need for that. So this degrees are, along with a lot of them, you can dilute them down to work with different metals. So the nut bolts, I'm going to put this quill stem bolt in evapor rust overnight. And obviously the rust off that front derailleur that's got to come up as well. So while all those parts are soaking in the evapor rust overnight, I decide to clean the frame up. This is what I normally do sort of at the end of the day. I can go over the frame really nicely. And if there are any parts that are uh, rusted that I want to touch up, um, I can go over those and then let it dry overnight. So there's one spot here on the rear brake bridge, just there that I want to go over and basically just treat the rust. So I'm just sanding it here. I go over this quite roughly. I think I'm using about a 400 grit sandpaper and then I sort of feather it a little bit. And then on the end of my finger, you can't see it here, but I've got some CRC rust converter, which basically neutralizes the rust and seals it. So the rust won't develop any further from there. Then you have to take all the parts out, wipe them all down, give them a quick little rinse off after they've been in the evapor rust. Because I wanted to make this bike look quite nice compared to the <laughs> the state that it was in when it showed up with me, I decided to give it a bit of a light polish to the alloy parts. So I used my fine synthetic wool and then just some uh, metal polish after that, just by hand. So the cranks only spent about five minutes polishing these up. And then the rest of the alloy parts didn't take that much longer as well. I didn't do the chain rings because like what the hell, so some of the parts, you don't, it's not really necessary. Um, but the sky's the limit with this. I did another video on polishing cranks up to like, quite a, a nice mirror finish, but I didn't want to spend that much time because that took pretty much all day. Um, but I do have another video if you want to go pretty far into the polishing aspect of it. But keep in mind that it takes a long time. Uh, but this is a quite a nice result from being about, yeah, about five minutes on these cranks. So you can see these brake arms here, the, the, the U brakes. The one on the right there is polished up pretty quickly and the one on the left was not. Now 
other brake levers, you obviously, you, for obvious reasons, you don't want these like a high polish. But I do like to make them look sort of uniform. They stick out a bit much if they're like a quite a dull satin finish when the other parts are pretty well polished. So just sort of make them a bit more uniform. So I figured while I was pulling the wheel apart, regreasing everything, I would swap from the Uniglide cassette, which basically just has a threaded on smallest cog, to a Hyperglide. And this is a seven speed. It's pretty much a straight fit. The spines are the same. The axle width is slightly different, so I'll use the wider axle. I'm gonna use the old non-drive side bearings, the bearings from the new axle on the drive side, because that matches the free hub. So the reason why I changed to the Hyperglide cassette hub, it's really just for ease of maintenance later down the road. Um, those cogs probably would have been fine, but if they wear out, then I can't just whip into the bike store and pick up some new cogs. It's a lot easier to find a 7-speed cassette, so that's why I chose that pretty much. Just really to keep costs down and make things easier when it gets worn out. So from here it was pretty simple straightforward reassembly. Um, the U-brake is a little bit different to use if you haven't set one up before. I go over that when I set it up so no need to worry. <laughs> and spacing the frame you'll need to do that to fit the 7 speed. So cold setting a frame is pretty simple as long as you keep an eye out on um, spacing it. So you can use just a, a spare axle if you have one or a bolt with a few nuts on it. Just spread it out over a couple of nights and keep an eye on the, um, the chainstay by the bottom bracket area. Um, what you'll want to look out for is sort of stress marks in the paint. That's sort of the first indication that the frame is stretching beyond what it's comfortable at. Tan walls. These last a really long time. I've had these on a couple of different bikes over the years. I don't even know how many Ks I've done on them. But um, that might actually be the front. No. Uh, there's both them side by side. So this is one way of cold setting the frame, like I was briefly explaining earlier. This is just an old axle with um, yeah, the, the cones on it. But basically you could use a bolt to go through the dropouts and then just some nuts to spread it. And then just keep an eye out on all the chain stays and bridges by the bottom bracket there.
So with your brakes, in order to have the brakes feeling as nice as possible, you have to have the cable hanger as close to the bottom bracket cable guide as possible, but you need to allow a little bit so that the cable hanger doesn't actually hit the cable guide. So if you have the straddle hanger a little bit too close to the calipers, then a, the lever will feel like a little bit squishy and it also won't have as much power, braking power, so it's something to keep in mind. And also a little trick is to use a clamp to hold the brake pads up against the rim. It just makes adjusting and the initial setup a little bit easier. At this point it was pretty much all done, I just needed to do some final adjustments, setting up the gears and the brakes properly. Um, unfortunately I don't have much footage of when it was completely finished. I do have a couple of short clips here when I took it on its test ride and I have some photos as well. So I can't take any clips of it because it's actually not in my position right now. So it's being used by a really nice guy called Sherwin, who's visiting Auckland for a couple of months. So he's using it just to toddle around Auckland. So I threw a rear rack on it and a bottle cage holder. Um, bottle cage holder? Bottle holder. So he's gonna be using it for the, a couple of months and then I might get it back at the end of that. Um, I don't know, he might try and take it home. He'll probably look at that and see how expensive it is. But the bike went really nicely. I'm really glad to have picked it up, especially at the cost it was. Uh, it tidied up really nicely. So that's about all that I have of this bike. So the next one is a specialized rock hopper that I did a drop bar conversion on. Hopefully I can have some more riding clips of that. Um, it depends on if we go for a ride this week with the current owner because I've passed it on similar sort of style as this. Um, but yeah, it's a nice drop bar conversion. Sweet, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.